Don't go away. Jonathan is about to find some of the most amazingly camouflaged animals in the sea. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. On a reef in the Pacific, a group of yellow-tailed blue damselfish hide near the coral, ready to duck into a hole at any moment. Between them all, watching and not moving a muscle, is a scorpion fish. His perfect camouflage is the result of skin that can change color to match the surroundings. The only thing that gives him away is the slight movement of his gills as he breathes. He's watching the damselfish. They're blissfully unaware of his presence. Soon, a damselfish comes too close. The scorpionfish is so confident in its camouflage that almost nothing can frighten it. Many animals in the ocean rely upon camouflage to hunt their prey or to avoid being eaten. This crocodile fish is so well camouflaged that divers rarely notice them. Even its eye has camouflage because a round black pupil would give it away. Like the crocodile fish, the frogfish is an ambush predator that hides using camouflage to look like a sponge with algae growing on it. It doesn't swim very much. Instead, it walks on its foot-like fins. It moves slowly so it doesn't give itself away. The frogfish is watching a group of tiny antheas waiting for one to come close enough to eat. The frogfish hasn't eaten in days, but no matter how hungry she is, she must wait patiently for prey to come to her. She watches and waits. It may be hours before she gets a meal. Later, as the sun sets, she's still waiting in the shadows, practically invisible to the antheas. A frogfish has the fastest mouth on the reef. It can open its mouth so fast that it slurps up a fish in less than one sixtieth of a second. That's literally the blink of an eye. Even in slow motion, the gulp is barely visible. Her camouflage has really paid off. Although sometimes camouflage is about blending into the bottom, other times a creature evolves to mimic another creature. This is called mimicry. Come check out this fish. On an Indonesian reef, I find a beautiful pink sea fan. At first glance, you would never suspect that it has tiny inhabitants. But closer inspection reveals a seahorse, no larger than my fingernail. It's a pygmy seahorse. The color and knobby bumps on the pygmy seahorse's skin perfectly mimic the appearance of the sea fan where it lives, a classic example of mimicry. They're only visible if they move. These animals live their entire lives in safety because they're nearly invisible to predators and they never have to leave the safety of the sea fan because they feed on plankton drifting right by their home. Out on the sand, away from the reef, a pair of what are apparently leaves drift down current. But upon closer inspection, they're not leaves at all. They just look like them. 
They're robust ghost pipefish, mimicking harmless drifting leaves so they can float up and pluck shrimp from the bottom. The robust ghost pipefish almost perfectly mimics a piece of eelgrass. Its relative, the ornate ghost pipefish, has taken a different approach to camouflage. It mimics the appearance of a harmless and not very tasty feather star. This fish is a poor swimmer, but it doesn't have to swim well because potential predators just don't see it. The sandy seafloor has a surprising number of animals that hide by blending in, and few do it as well as the flounder. Except for its breathing, this flat fish is nearly invisible. With a quick rippling of its body, this flounder puts a thin layer of sand over itself and vanishes. Of course, blending into the bottom is one thing, but what about animals that live up in the water column? Can they be camouflaged too? Absolutely. Many open ocean fish are silvery in color. Why? So they reflect the color of the water around them. It doesn't make them invisible, but a lot harder to see, especially from further away. Many sharks have a form of camouflage known as countershading. The underside of a shark is white, while the top of the shark is darker. When seen from below, the shark's lighter coloring underneath helps it blend in with the lighter water above. When viewed from above, the darker dorsal surface of the shark makes it blend into the darker water below. Pretty clever, huh? Some animals have coloration that makes them stand out instead of blend in. For many fish, the brighter the coloration, the easier it is to attract a mate. And it would seem that finding a mate is more important for these king angelfish than avoiding predators. A regal angelfish takes this coloration to an extreme. This fish wants to be noticed. This long-nosed butterfly fish has a clever adaptation of color to help confuse predators. There's a black dot at the base of its tail called a false eye spot. Its real eye is obscured by dark coloration running right through it. This is meant to confuse predators. The nudibranch, also called a sea slug, has bright coloration that scientists call aposematic. These animals are basically snails without a shell. They might look like a tasty and defenseless little snack for a passing fish, but in fact, many nudibranchs secrete a toxic acid that makes them inedible to virtually anything on the reef. Its bright aposematic coloration is a warning to potential predators that says, I don't taste good. Perhaps the most incredible coloration possessed by a sea creature is that of the octopus. An octopus can change colors. This octopus is moving from reef to rubble to sand. It changes color and skin patterns as it goes to blend in. There are almost as many camouflage and color schemes in the ocean as there are fish in the sea. I'm always amazed by the things I observe in the blue world, and fortunately, I get to see this stuff even though I'm not very camouflaged at all.